Artificial general intelligence. I think I can finally see a path for how we'll get there. Let's have a look. There's no consensus definition for what exactly artificial general intelligence, AGI for short, means. But I think most people mean intelligence comparable to that of humans or above. And the general sense I'm getting from people in AI research is that AGI is a few years away, maybe a little more, but likely less than a decade. Demis Hassabus, chief executive of Google DeepMind, for example, has recently said that AGI is probably just a handful of years away. We've been working on this for more than 20 plus years. Um, we've sort of had a consistent view about AGI being a system that's capable of exhibiting all the cognitive capabilities humans can. Um, and I think we're getting, you know, closer and closer, but I think we're still probably uh, a handful of years away. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, wrote last year that it's possible that we'll have super intelligence in a few thousand days. And last month, he added somewhat vaguely on his blog that systems that start to point to AGI are coming into view, where he defines AGI generally speaking as a system that can tackle increasingly complex problems at human level in many fields. If nothing else, we can credit Altman for single-handedly keeping blogs alive. Dario Amode, the CEO of Anthropic, doesn't like the expression AGI because to him it's more of a marketing term. But he also believes that the AGI he doesn't want to call AGI is just a few years away. AGI has never been a well-defined term for me. I've always thought of it as a marketing term. But um, you know, the way, the way I think about it is at some point we're going to get to AI systems that are better than almost all humans at almost all tasks. The term I've used for it in an essay I recently wrote is a country of geniuses in a right. data center. It's a sort of evocative phrase for all the power and all the positive things and you know, all of the potential negative things that's the thing that I think we are quite likely to get in the next two or three years. Generally, people in Silicon Valley say they feel the AGI. Kevin Rose, who clearly spends too much time talking to these people, wrote in a recent New York Times essay that the first claims of AGI will come probably in 2026 or 2027, but possibly as soon as this year. Then again, people who work on tech developments tend to be, shall we say, somewhat over over optimistic. The cognitive scientist Gary Marcus, who has a somewhat more grounded outsider opinion, recently wrote, I think there's almost zero chance that artificial general intelligence will arrive in the next two to three years, especially given how disappointing GPT 4.5 turned out to be. What he means is that GPT 4.5 was basically very little, very late. But even Marcus thinks that AGI will come. It's just that the current models, large language models or transformer models, aren't going to get us there. As I said previously, I agree with him on that. Honestly, the idea that you can breed intelligence from text seems somewhat idiotic to me. You could say, well, what does Zabina know about intelligence? Fair enough. I mean, maybe I'm not even real. But by now, most AI experts agree that the current models are unlikely to get us to AGI. You can tell from a recent survey that was conducted between summer 2024 and spring 2025 by the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence. They asked almost 500 AI experts and found that three quarters think that scaling up current AI approaches to yield AGI is unlikely or very unlikely to succeed. A good illustration for the problem is this multiplication table. That shows how often one of the recent GPT models is successful in multiplying large numbers. The more the models have been trained, the better they've become with increasingly large numbers, but they still haven't learned the pattern. Now, on the one hand, you can say, OK, but this problem is easy to solve. You just need to switch to a math software for purposes like this. OK, but on the other hand, this shows that even after being trained on huge amounts of data, large language models don't develop an understanding of how multiplication works in general. Despite the fact that they have access to countless textbooks that explain how it works and that they can write code to multiply numbers, clearly something isn't clicking into place. But if not those models, then what? 
there are two developments that I think are likely to become more relevant in the near future. The one is to bring in some sort of symbolic reasoning that's basically a logical core. If you combine the symbolic reasoning with neural networks, it's called neurosymbolic and it's what DeepMind's AlphaProof used to achieve its impressive maths abilities. AI researchers have tried to connect symbolic reasoning to large language models with what's called knowledge graphs. These are basically attempts to break down text into its logical relations. I think this will come and it'll be an improvement in reasoning abilities, but ultimately not get us to AGI because most text isn't logical. It'll not solve the underlying problems with large language models. So symbolic reasoning will come and it's a good trend, but latching it onto the existing models won't be enough. The other development that's been going on is what AI researchers call world models. These are predictive models for, well, the world. In the simplest case for, say, the motions of objects in a 3D space. But once you have predictive models for any sort of data, you can also use them for more abstract ideas. Here is how Jean Le Coeur from Meta explains this. I mean, first, the, the notion of a world model is, is the idea that uh, a system would get some idea of the state of the world and be able to predict uh, sort of following states of, of the world resulting from just the natural evolution of the world or resulting from an action that the agent might take. And here is again Demis Hassabis about the relevance of world models. First of all, you've got to build um, general models, world models, we call them, uh, to understand the world around you, the physics of the world, um, the dynamics of the world, the sp spatial temporal dynamics of the world, and so on, and the structure of, of the real world we live in. So I think what we'll see is world models combined with symbolic reasoning which can use large language models as a tool and not the other way around. And it'll probably take at least five years. Until then, we'll likely see some companies backpedal from AGI claims and instead get systems that are increasingly good at specialized tasks like literature or web searches, but have no general intelligence. This is why I think Sam Altman writes that the path to AGI will be continuous rather than a sudden leap. It's to force store people's disappointment when GPT-5 finally comes and isn't anywhere near human level intelligence. But Dario Amode's expression, a country of geniuses in a data center, brings up an interesting question. What genius would voluntarily spend their life in a data center? Then again, what genius would voluntarily spend their life in academia? I read a lot of news to keep you well informed, and I found that the best way to do this is on Ground News, who've been sponsoring this video. Ground News is a news platform that collects and summarizes news, which has been published all over the world. Not only do they collect all articles on the same story in one place and give you a quick summary, they also give you a lot of extra information that you don't find in the standard media. Take, for example, the recent news that some liquor stores in Canada removed American imports after Trump's US tariffs went into effect. You see right away that this news basically hasn't been covered by the political right. You also get a factuality rating for each news item and it tells you whom the media outlets are owned by and where the news has appeared. You can also switch between a focus on US and EU news. Ground News also has this great feature called Blind Spot. This this tells you which news has been almost exclusively covered only by one side of the political spectrum. And of course, I have a special offer for you. That's a 40% discount on the Vantage plan, which gives you access to all their features. All you need to do is use my link ground.news slash Sabina or use the QR code so they'll know I sent you. I really think that Ground News is onto something with their news overview, so go and have a look. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.